<clears throat> Hello everybody and welcome to your next C-Sharp XNA platformer tutorial and this tutorial we're going to continue where we left off so right here I said we need to do more and we do need to do more so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna make an entity called E and we're gonna make a for loop and it's gonna loop through player dot entities dot count okay and what we're gonna do is e is gonna be equal to player dot entities i and then we're gonna call map dot update collision pass in a reference to e and then player entities i is equal to e okay and we're gonna do the same thing for our enemies right because we want our enemies to be able to collide and stuff too so uh entities count i plus plus e is equal to enemies dot entities i map dot update ref e uh enemies dot entities equals e okay and that should get uh, the collision up and running. So we'll say uh, map.draw, player.draw, enemies.draw. Okay. Okay, so we've got both of them. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, so we got both of them drawn. So now let's go to our enemy class. And what we want to do is we're going to add in a few things. We're going to call range uh, and we'll have a range counter. And the load content, we will, if you want, what we will do now is we'll just have uh, another for loop that loop through the attributes or actually we will just go to our entity class, add in range, and the thing about it is that we want range to only belong to the enemy class. So, to well, the, if it if it you know what, because even if we modif modify the range in the player class, it won't have any effect anyways. So in entity.cs, we'll just say range. <laughs> we gotta make a variable for it. So protected int range. Or, yeah, so int range. We'll say range is equal to int.parse contents i break. Okay. So we can get rid of this and we'll just have a range counter. And our range counter is going to be zero. <coughs> so we'll say range counter equals to zero. Okay, so the way our enemy is going to work, and we're going to put direction. And by default, we'll just set that direction to one. And we got to add a few things. We're going to add a destination position and a ri original position so our original position is going to be equal to our position in here uh, and our direction will be equal to one you could set it that you modify that in the text file as well but we just set it for one for all the enemies now and we'll say that if direction is equal to one then our destination position is equal to new vector 2 and we only we actually only care about the x right we don't care about um, the y coordinate so we'll say it's equal to original position dot x plus the range and then we'll say else desk position dot x is equal to ridge position dot x minus the range okay so in our load content what's gonna happen 
is our range counter is going to increase by one or actually we'll have a vol our velocity so if direction is equal to one then we'll say velocity dot x is equal to move speed times float game time elapsed game time total seconds and then we will set our move animation current frame is equal to or current frame dot y is going to be equal to um it's going to be equal to two and i don't think we can do that yeah because it's not a variable so it's going to be equal to new vector to move animation dot current frame current frame dot x and we're gonna put two right here so just like our image was before on um, the down is zero left is one right is two okay and what we could do if you want to you could add an enum in the entity class that um that goes with direction right since the spreadsheets are the same then we could handle the player and um, the enemies based on the enums but it's really up to you whichever one you want to do so do else if direction is equal to two then velocity dot x is equal to move speed equal to negative move speed times float game time elapsed game time total seconds and let's just copy this and change that to one okay uh, so we got that and what we'll say right now is that we'll say that if we'll say that yeah if activate gravity then velocity dot y plus equals gravity times float and this shouldn't be unfamiliar to you it should be familiar to you and we'll say position plus equals velocity now we're gonna say that if position if direction is equal to one and position dot x is greater than des or greater than or equal to desk position dot x then we'll change the direction equal to two and our desk position dot x will be equal to our range position subtract the range and we'll say else if direction is equal to two and position dot x is less than or equal to desk position dot x direction will be equal to one desk position dot x is equal to a ridge position dot x plus the range okay and at the bottom here then we'll say move animation dot position is equal to position okay and we will call SS animation dot update the game time and make a reference to our move animation. <coughs> so we need to add in our load content for our enemy. We'll just set our move animation is active to true because the enemy is always going to be moving. Well, in, in this game, at least the enemy is always going to be in a walking state okay so now they got everything set let's build this and let's see the errors we get cuz I'm expecting some errors okay so in our entity.cs I forgot to remove the J from here and let's see what else we got so that's just a warning. Okay, so everything is fine. So let's run this. Uh, so object not set to a reference. So what we got to do is right here. We never set it to anything. So our move animation or anything. So we got to say... Uh, 
let's say move animation is equal to new animation ss animation is equal to that and yeah so oh we do this at the bottom that's why okay and it's having trouble reading our files so load.enemies.cme uh let's let's run this again let's just see the error we get Uh, oh, I believe I know why. So we need to go to the properties. And, oh, it's running. So that's why we can't see it. Okay, so the property should be copy if newer. And that should work. And there's a bunch of errors. Let me pause this and figure them all out. Okay, so uh, one thing we need to fix is in enemy.cs, we need to change this to move animation.draw instead of base.draw. Uh, also, my enemies.cme, I just forgot to put the comma for the position. Uh, we also got to add in the range. So let's just add that in. Say the range is 100. Uh, let's see if we type that right. It's uppercase. Yeah. So let's run this. So as you can see, we got our, it's kind of buggy, but we got our uh, enemy drawn. So what we're gonna do is instead of working with moving platforms right now, what we're gonna do is go to our map. Let's just make it static, just to see how it works when they're static. And we can fix it when there's moving platforms after. So it is for some reason it's not detecting uh, the other range. So maybe we did something wrong. Uh, so if direction equals to two and position X is less than or equal to desk position X then yeah so oh it should be d direction equals to one and let's see if this works and there we go voila we got our enemy so we'll fix some of the bugs so we got our enemy moving so we'll fix some of the bugs uh in the next few tutorials so I hope you enjoyed this. You finally got your enemy moving across the screen. We'll add in a few stuff, fix some bugs with the moving platforms, and we'll be on our way. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this, and bye for now.